Hey everyone, this is Dave the Prayer Guy. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch this video vlog. I hope this one and previous ones that I've recorded have been helpful to you as you're thinking about prayer as a fuel for God's mission and really having that be the focus of your prayer. And so this vlog is a continuation from last time. If you were listen, if you watched it last time, I talked about Cornelius from chapter 10 of, of the book of Acts, how he heard from an angel about um, to go and find Peter. And I talked about in that vlog that, you know, God does talk to Jews and to Muslims to kind of show them who Christ is and talks to nominal Christians as well to show them who Christ is and hopes that they will go and seek out a true believer uh, out there to learn about more. I mean, that's exactly what Cornelius does after he hears from God, from an angel, he sends out men to go find Peter. Now I'm going to read, uh, I'm going to continue on to that story in Acts chapter 10 about what was going on with Peter at the same time that these men were traveling. And I think it's great because, well, let me just read it. About noon the following day, as they were on their journey and approaching the city, Peter went up on the roof to pray. He became hungry and wanted something to eat. And while the meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw heaven opened and something like a large sheet being let down to earth by its four corners. It contained all kinds of four-footed animals as well as reptiles and birds. Then a voice told him, Get up, Peter, kill, and eat. Surely not, Lord, Peter replied. I have never eaten anything impure or unclean. The voice spoke to him a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. This happened three times, and immediately the sheet was taken back up to heaven. Um, so, as they sometimes say, every story is two sides. So this is about Peter's side in the same story. And, and so it's lunchtime. He's up praying, probably a noontime prayer that some liturgical folks that are believers kind of follow. Um, and they pro and that's just a practice that Peter probably had while he's waiting for lunch to be ready. And you got to remember, Peter's also one of the lo lo leaders of the young church. And he shows here the importance of prayer for his own development. And because if he develops well in his prayer life, then it's going to be a lot easier for the church to develop in their prayer life. So he's being an example. He's being what a leader should do. And during this time, he has a vision with unclean food. And he's commanded three times to eat this unclean food. Now, for a Jewish man, I mean, Peter has the reaction, what a typical Jewish man would have, that it's hard to accept. And he's like, no way, Lord, I'm not eating anything that's unclean. But God tells him that three times. And if you remember, when Peter denied Christ, it was three times. So I, I think God was trying to give him a point. You know, don't, don't call anything unclean that I am declaring clean. And in some ways, he's telling Peter that the Gentiles are now going to be clean. And so um, let's read um, 17 through 23 so we can get a sense of how, so we can learn how Peter responded to this. While Peter was wondering about the meaning of the vision, the men sent by Cornelius found out where Simon's house was and stopped at the gate. They called out, asking if Simon, who was known as Peter, was staying there. While Peter was still thinking about the vision, the spirit said to him, Simon, three men are looking for you, so get up, go downstairs. Do not hesitate to go with them, for I have sent them. And Peter went down and said to the men, I'm the one you're looking for. Why have you come? The men replied, We have come from Cornelius the centurion. He is a righteous and God-fearing man who is respected by all Jewish people. A holy angel told him to ask you to come to, this, to come to his house so that I could hear what you say. Then Peter invited the men into the house to be his guest. So there's a couple of things I want to point out here. One, the first thing I want to point out is the fact that um, Peter wondered what the vision was about. He thought about it. And I bet if he had time, he probably would have asked his fellow Christians what they thought it could mean and pray into it. But Peter doesn't get that chance because immediately God is like, okay, Simon, go downstairs. There are men looking for you. 
So he goes downstairs and he tells them, yep, I'm the guy you're looking for. Why are you looking for me? And that's when the men of Cornelius tell him what's going on. And then Peter invites them in. If you read the rest of Acts 10, we know that Peter goes out and actually talks to Cornelius and then um, does, you know, does a gospel presentation for him, shares the gospel with Cornelius. And, and so I think that, uh, you know, that's important that as Peter's listening to God, he goes in and he does exactly what God wants him to do. As God is speaking to his mission, as God is speaking to Peter to do this. And it takes time to kind of listen and understand what it is God is saying to you. You don't just, you know, get a vision and go, oh, I know immediately what that means. You actually spend some time pondering it. You spend some time um, re-listening to God and praying into it. You spend time talking about it with other believers that may or may not have insight. And the nice thing with us is that we have the New Testament and the Old Testament that we can kind of read to see, is there anything in Scripture that could speak into that vision that God gave me? Um, and all those things are important. So keep finding time to listen to God. Keep praying into what you're hearing. Keep praying for God's vision, what God is calling you to do. So thank you so much for taking time to listen. Uh, I hope that you would like this video and subscribe to the channel. And as always, may the Lord be with you.